Welcome back, everyone. This segment is brought to you by Black Squirrel. Pen test networks from your browser. Exploit the limits of network security through just a browser. Have a Chrome exploit in your toolkit? Good. But for the rest of us, there's Black Squirrel. Visit blacksquirrel.io for more information. Welcome back. We've got a fabulous segment called Prying Eyes Are Watching You. <laughs> Larry, Larry has the music queued up. I love it. Nice. It might be soft enough where YouTube won't flag it for copyrighted content. <laughs> YouTube flags everything. For co There's no such thing as fair use in YouTube. Forget which, it. Which blows because you can use up yeah. to 30 seconds. Except that. someone posted that to you. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's from YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Anyway, that's a totally it's recursive permission. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, at, least, uh, uh, at least we didn't... Uh, Call this segment "Kiss is on my list." Yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's please, even uh, better that neither of you tried to sing it, so we're we're ahead of the it's, game. We're ahead of the game. Welcome, Michael Santarcangelo, to the See? show. See, second, second drink. Th I'm on point. <laughs> it's solid, man. <laughs> Not this is Kevin. When I say it. <laughs> <laughs> Not Kevin and Carlos Perez are on the lines via Skype, uh, and we're ready to talk about this story. It was kind of interesting. I didn't put it in the notes, but. I actually watched CSI Cyber. I, I'm ashamed to admit that. <laughs> it, it's, it's all right. This was a, all right. It's this was an epi This was an episode where they're hacking the baby monitors and creating sites where all of the yep, yep. people's baby monitors. It turns yep. out that happened in real life. Now, yeah, so, uh, see what I mean? It's not too bad. It's based not in too reality. Far off the, yeah, Mark, in terms of the premise of the story, anyhow. Right. Uh, the details much remains to be seen. Well, the details mm. are pretty much always wrong. But anyway... <laughs> There were mainstream media got a hold of this story. Uh, essentially, it sounds like a group of Russian hackers. I don't know. I called them Russian hackers. That might be wrong. A uh, group China. of hackers uh, found. What did the false China now? Yeah, China. China, you know, Russia, whatever. We're talking about hacking. You know, don't worry, six don't, one. Don't worry, Chris. I'm working on those attribution dice. And exactly. <laughs> so essentially. These network-based cameras, and it's interesting as I was watching the video version of the new segment, they panned to a, a shot of the camera itself, and it was a Foscam camera, which has had some security issues. Now, not to say all their cameras are horribly insecure, but they have had their fair share of security issues. And, you know, it went on to say about how they are you know, indexing all of these cameras, putting them up on a website. For what purpose... I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I want to know what the purpose of this is, but... Um, because you can. Because you can, maybe. Um, so, essentially, that's what's happening. Now, I, it might be kind of weird that they're accessing these cameras. From what I understand, there's lots be. of free porn on the internet. I don't know why you need to look into people's cameras in their houses um, or in their bathrooms. I, maybe some people would put these... I don't know. Larry, you had cameras in we your did. house at one we time. We did. This was back in the uh, Jenny Cam days. Yeah. Yeah. To give you an it idea a, as to yeah. how long ago that was. It was bad. <laughs> it was. I don't think this is just a consumer problem to further set the stage. I think many businesses, including enterprises, you fall victim to weak security on security cameras, which is ironic to say that in it of itself. <laughs> um, the mainstream media of this, you know, the cyber is just plain bad. They term these as nanny cams. Uh, which is just uh, kind of weird because this applies to all network-based cameras mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. have firmware, that have a video system, and somehow, in some way, shape, or form, connect to the internet. And their recommendations are pretty horrible. But I wanted to yes. get everyone's go around and kind of get everyone's take on on this story and, and kind of how you feel about how this unfolded. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about the problem first and then talk about how you fix it, but. Well, uh, let's talk about the problem because this isn't new. When we no. had 900 megahertz wireless or you know cordless phones in the house, mm -hmm. the the baby monitors at that time could easily pick that up. And if you were interested <laughs> enough, you could try to listen on, on your neighbor's phone calls. And in fact, I'm they, not in, saying. In fact, they still do because we have a 900 megahertz baby monitor <laughs> for the distinct purpose of being able to listen to that stuff with software defined radio and all that stuff. But, and from time to time, it picks up the neighbor's phone. But here's the th Yeah, I don't want to hear anyone else's baby crying. I don't want to hear my, my kids crying. <laughs> yeah. Which, as toddlers, they still cry in the middle of the night. What is up yep. with that? Anyway, uh, but yeah, they would pick up people's phone calls, mm -hmm. uh, which is seemingly random and requires uh, physical proximity. Mm -hmm. This attack yeah, but is here's different, right? They could be in no, Russia no. or China. Yeah, no, the attack's different. But, but I, I think what, what matters is... I'm going to shift the gear for one second only because it's the, it's a mindset. The mindset is 
this is something that's good for the consumer who would ever do anything with it. Yeah. Right. So if you look at some of these, these services, the cloud-based services, consumer oriented, I'm not talking business to business. I think it's a different class, but a lot of the early run, if you, I was fortunate enough to talk to some of the CTOs and I'd say, Hey, tell me about your model for security. And they'd say, Oh, um, we just want it to be like email. And I'd stop. I go, email's not secure. And they'd say, yeah, I know. I go, what? <laughs> and they said, well, people are familiar with email. We, we just want it to work. We want it to be easy to use and familiar. So now carry that forward. You're a consumer. You've got, or you're a consumer, right? So, so if we think about it in terms of their condition, their condition is they've been convinced that it's not enough to have their child in the same house with them. They have to have them under a watchful eye of a video monitor. But, you know, they want to go sit on the couch or something, so they need some way to be able to monitor it from wherever they are or whatever. Now, is it an actual need? No. But it's, it's what people uh, have conditioned themselves that they need. And so the companies that service this, they've always erred on the side of, well, how do we make this as convenient as possible? Now, I don't think it's a fair statement. I think if, if these companies took time and said, hey, we want you to protect your precious snowflake – and so uh, here's what we recommend doing. Guys, we've, we've all spent time figuring out how to automate security or incorporate better controls into it. I don't think it's a tough challenge. So I think what's happened is there's a mindset of, well, who's going to do anything with it anyway? Then the stories pop up. And let's be fair. These stories pop up, what, every 90 days or so? They're really sensational. They're yep. always at some local news station because, you know, it's a slow news day and you got to have something to put on TV. Yeah, so, like during the, like during the summer all, shark attacks. Cyber. Yeah. Yeah, I live on a beach, right? With shark attacks, are totally. I'm surprised we haven't had one yet. But, you know, so I... Is it is it a legitimate concern? Absolutely. And, and Paul, I'm really glad you pointed out the... Um, the business side to it because you know, it, it's the same thing, right? By the way, in the business world, closed circuit television always existed as a closed circuit. It was a physical wire. Yeah. And then we started making it IP based, but running it over, not on, you're right, not a segmented network, not a, a special, they're just, hey, it's IP based. This is great. And then we went wireless with it. <laughs> But, you know, and, and it, Kevin, but, you know, but, Kevin, when you're, you're walking around with your Pony Express devices, I'm sure you don't find any wireless <laughs> cameras, right? Oh, no, not at all. And I don't happen to de auth those cameras. No, yeah, yeah, absolutely exactly. not. <laughs> well, that, that's an interesting attack. And, you know, being in a, a, a city like Boston, I'm sure you see a lot of those. And, and that is a legitimate attack. I've seen research on that before um, where you can tap into the feed, replace it with another feed, or just de auth it altogether. Or, yeah, if they're tied to a security system that doesn't uh, monitor the status of their camera, if it goes down, it's not going to tell you. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised how often I've seen that. Yeah, and that couples a with a lot of. In, Go ahead, Mike. There was a, I, was just, I was just gonna say there was a person in Toronto. This is a couple years ago, but I bet it would still work. They, they did a whole like an art program. Uh, they would bring you around the city of Toronto with big screens, and they would show you all the cameras in the proximity of wherever you were. Yep. You know, and it was kind of like one of those: get on the party bus, we'll show you the pictures. Here, have some beer. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm. Carlos, so he's in Boston. Take a duck tour. Carlos, do they do that kind of thing in Puerto Rico? Is there a lot of a lot of cameras and surveillance in Puerto Rico? Not that much. There are some areas like uh, San Juan, the touristy area. Police have set up several cameras in that area, but the rest of the cameras that I see around are in businesses. Yeah. You know what's interesting? Just, uh, there was a, uh, now you guys make me want to go deeper. There was just a story. Myrtle Beach is going to install 800 cameras this year. 800. And I, I, OMG hacks. <laughs> and I find well, that I just now I'm curious. The level of security I think varies, and I, I think there's a couple of different forms of this, right? There's the Foscam type cameras, which are a completely self-contained unit. They maybe talk to the wireless network. They listen on a port. You connect to it. You can see the video, and they have firmware, and usually come with some set of default passwords, which is what I imagine this uh, how the attackers in Russia or China were able to get all the feeds was just either guessing the password or using the default password. Mm -hmm. My experience with some of this gear, I spent considerably more for a, a hard drive recording camera that has multiple wireless, a hard drive recording uh, DVR, which has multiple wireless cameras connected to it. Mm. It turns out there's a lot of issues with that, uh, such as wireless <laughs> interference, which totally throws my Sonos through a loop. It's yep, terrible. Been, been there because all the, yeah. the ones we have at home are all 2.4 gigahertz stuff. And Yes. I, I actually had to actually turn off, and I re finally replaced my D-Link DIR yeah, 512 or whatever AC. it was yeah. with one of those nice ones. Yep. 
and I had to turn off all of my access points to actually make my cameras work, except for the new one at five gigahertz. Yep, so. yep, that happens. Mm -hmm. um, so the interesting thing is the one that I got at home limits you to a four or six character password. Huh. That's the, the <laughs> maximum you can put serious? in. I'm serious. <laughs> I've experienced this in my own. I bought it on Amazon, got it on package. That is the maximum length of the password that you can enter. H A C K M E. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. P A S S word. Shit. Shit. I can't even use the password as the password. The password. There, there are other options like Dropcam if you trust Google. Mm. So that's a great point, Carlos. The other systems that I see are like Dropcam where the, you're not logging into the camera itself. The cameras all go up to the cloud and report up to the cloud and you log into the cloud to see your video. And yeah. in, in, in certain instances, I think for the, a lot of these consumer things, that, that might be a good thing. I get kind of concerned as to who else could possibly mm -hmm, see mm -hmm. that if it's sitting in the cloud. One-stop shopping. And with, drop, <laughs> mm. <laughs> with Dropcam, though, if you want to record, it will only record to the cloud. You cannot record locally. Cool. And they charge extra yep. per month for sure. that. Yep. That's what turned me off you know about it, Dropcam. Because I didn't well, have a Dropcam and you for bring, a while. You're bringing up a point that, that needs to be emphasized, which is... If, if we're talking about something that's cloud, we, we have to get better at ourselves at distinguishing between B2C and B2B. Because, it, because I've, sp I've been spending a lot of time in the last month or so working more around SaaS providers and B2B providers. And, and the good news is they're taking this stuff really seriously. But now we're back to talking about B2C level stuff. I mean, I was fielding questions from family today about, you know, um, whatever one of the tax programs is wants to save our tax return to the cloud is that safe mm. it's, it's a it's a great question mm -hmm. um, there's a know, lot it, you know there's a lot of technologies at play and it's a good segue into the Veracode report that was released oh. on the internet of insecure things did you see that no i didn't but i want to take a mm. quick if you don't mind i want yeah, to take yeah, a quick ahead. step back about this whole problem with the camera and I, I don't know if i understand exactly how some of this problem comes about because these consumers go and buy their nanny cam and they bring it home and they plug it into their Ethernet port or they plug it into their Wi-Fi router and hackers, using the bad term, which we shouldn't do, uh, attackers are finding these cameras connected to the Internet. How does that happen? I mean, one, isn't, isn't one that acronym, what? I have one acronym for you. Yeah. UPNP. I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah. That's but, exactly how that happens. Aren't most of the time now you're seeing these home routers come with UPNP disabled by default? No, they're coming with UPNP enabled. The yeah. routers enabled that are distributed. Go ahead, Kevin. No, I was going to say, I've seen it almost time and time again. UPNP is always almost enabled by default. And that's how these cameras are getting out. Interesting. Okay. Cause it, 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 it happened yeah. when and, I was... And, and when you see closer. routers that have it disabled, as soon as you put an Xbox or a PlayStation... And you connect it, and you run your network test. First thing it flags, hey, you don't have UPnP enabled. Or Skype. Here, go to this link. It will explain how to, how to enable it. Gotcha. Yep. And that, that's what I want. That's what I wanted to be clear the, of. The device wants to write the firewall rules for you. Right. Because and, and that's well. and that's what I thought. But I wanted to be I wanted to be sure and wanted to pick everybody's brain on it because, quite honestly, I run PFSense at home and UPnP is yeah. Shut the heck off. Right. Exactly. Um, but you, you have to remember that we're kind of all in the outlier here where we'd actually deploy one of these cameras properly. But your consumer who goes to a big box store to buy one of these, yep. they want plug and play. Right. I want my camera and I don't want to care about technology because I don't understand it. He, therein lies the problem. I mean, a quick Google search will tell you there's hundreds of thousands of these devices right now that you can access. This is, this is exactly how it happened. It's bored kids Googling. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're inherent is the problem of the devices themselves is convenience versus security. Mm. Yeah, and you know, and I, I, as I'm listening to this and I'm, I'm processing it too, I, I, I go back to being a parent, you know, again, because I, I think one of the things, Paul, that you put in the notes was, you know, you got to think about whether you need this or not. I think it's yeah, a great absolutely. question. But let's say somebody says, no, I do. I need it. I want it. For whatever it is. Great. Then, you know, I, I, I'm always leery when we say, well, then it's incumbent on them. They should have gotten it right. They should have followed 10 other steps. I mean, yeah, I, I, we know to do that type of stuff. But at some level, we've got to say, wait a minute. Is it a reasonable – when a consumer buys this device, do they have a reasonable expectation of, of some level of privacy or security? And I recognize that there's a distinction between the two. And if so, then, then how do we advocate for that? Uh, to get it in. But, you know, look, these companies are still selling the cameras. I, I, I'm willing to bet that um, when these stories show up, they don't even see a blip in the sales. In fact, somebody probably goes, 
you can have a camera to watch your kids? Yeah, that's cool. I didn't I know they one. had one of those. Yeah. I want one of those. Honey, what if a hacker gets it? Why? Why would they look at our kid? They're mm-hmm. not going to do that. We're good. And they go out and buy yeah, it. It's the not, it won't happen to me problem. Yep. Right. Not, yeah, and you tell those same people. That reminds me of a conversation I had a month ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. I had that same conversation with a family member a month ago. Yep. And now you hacked their camera to prove a point? <laughs> And now, now you got to tell him, Carlos. No. I'm sorry. You conducted security research. She's a lawyer. Right. <laughs> well, she's it, a lawyer. Yeah, she's a lawyer. <laughs> I'm go there. Um, you would have that problem explaining to the family member that you have to keep that firmware up to date, right? And that's one of the recommendations that we that we put down. And clearly, we've talked about those issues before. With even just that statement of, firmware? "Hey, dear family member, you need to keep that firmware up to date." Huh? What's firmware? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Um, yep. I I do think that the cloud definitely plays in and provides a better level of security than yeah. plugging your camera in and having it automatically make firewall rules over UPnP, um, and it just comes down to how much do we trust the cloud. Well, if you're if you're okay. a consumer who's never going to deploy the camera properly anyways, the, yeah. the cloud is the best thing possible. It takes all control away from the user and provides security. They don't care about their privacy in the first place, so putting their information in the cloud. It has no meaningful impact on them. Right. They have a problem they want to solve, so they're not thinking about the ramifications. No, I mean, it, yeah. Well, and all I was, I'm just going to piggyback on that because if we look at all the stuff that happened around Apple and iCloud and pretexting and all these other things that keep happening, where people are like, "But, but, but it's the cloud." And we look at it, we go, "No, it's not. It's the way people are using it." But what are these companies doing in response when it's a cloud level? Mm-hmm. You know what? Screw it. We'll fix it. And, and they are. And the, the beauty of that then is that when you have enough mass of people doing something where one thing goes wrong, one upgrade cascades across everybody. I, I'm a huge fan of, of pushing more toward the cloud. I mean, I, I know that as an industry, a lot of us keep resisting it. We're, we're bitter about it. We're angry about it. We, we need to embrace it better and, and point out the people who are doing it right. So, you know, an interesting follow-up would be, so which companies allow people to use these types of cameras with the cloud to do remote access that we've looked at and said, hey, they're pretty good, right? Let's promote the good folks Mm -hmm. and and talk about why we like what they're doing because that's a really easy story to tell people, right? Uh, Instead uh, of UPMP, UPMP, firmware upgrades, determine your remote (laughs) access strategy. Exactly. Oh my, lost them, done. I'm going to play devil's advocate on the cloud and a lot of it's based on some Veracode research that was released where they looked at some home security and automation (laughs) technologies such as smart things. Carlos is laughing because he probably read the report like I did, right? And um, yeah, and I have some comments on it, some stuff they missed. Yeah, if, <laughs> I wasn't saying it was. You can only make a report so big, Carlos. This is true. Yeah, and it was very high level. No, no, I, I have I have one of the products. And, I do too. Uh, and one of the green, and one of the green parts that they marked, uh, I say like no, that's oh, wrong. Interesting, interesting. I haven't spent I, a lot of I time. I recently with the had a. Ones. Yeah, I, I had a, a um, recently about three weeks ago. My smart thing sub st- stopped working. I was kind of like, wow, oh, what's wrong with it? So I troubleshooting. Oh, yeah. uh, thankfully, I have PFSense, so I can do packet captures mm-hmm. of the smart thing hubs uh, as it's trying to get out. And I was looking at my PCAP, and I'm just going, everything looks okay. I see TLS connection, it connects, okay. I see it gets a certificate, establishing the connection. Uh, it says that the validation of the certificate chain failed. Okay, it's still connected. <laughs> it transmitted data, huh? And and then an RST, and I kept troubleshooting. I sent the PCAPs over to them. I started talking. Hey, look, I'm seeing the TLS connection. This is what's happening. Blah blah blah. I'm talking with the support person, and it's going like, "What's the TLS?" And go like, "Oh, can you ex- really? can you escalate this up the chain, please?" <laughs> And then I was able to connect to my neighbor's uh, Wi-Fi and do internet sharing. She actually let me uh, use her internet. And while I was looking at it, I saw that the help was able to connect and go like, huh, weird. So on her connection, it will connect. On mine, it won't. I grabbed both PCAPs, started looking at it, and see that the difference was NTP. Um, On one, I was able to get to NTP. The help was able to get time. On the other, it wasn't, and that was the failure. I had sent them those... I, I sent them those PCAPs like three weeks ago, and they never noticed that. I'm like, don't you guys know your product? 
And we were talking with, with support, and then one of the scariest things is I told them, hey, so you guys give me a second hub to do some troubleshooting. Um, can you guys help me out? Well, deleting the account and replacing the account. And this was over chat. It wasn't over email. And the guy went like, cool, give me your email. I'll delete that hub and create a new location for you and do everything for you. And go like, don't you need to verify who I am before you go into my account and start deleting devices and configuration? Who yes, else would call me? Reputation preceded you. Who else would just know you? I'm like, shit. It's First, like you guys Carlos are not guy checking the freaking certificates. And now this. <laughs> Well, wow. so here's the thing, though. Let's 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 play devil's advocate with playing devil's advocate. <laughs> it, it doesn't it doesn't seem surprising to me that if we go looking for problems, we're going to find them. Um, I, I'd love to start seeing solutions. Uh, so, what do we do? Well, I, I mean, think about it again, right? In fact, right? I think you know, they're in, listening in, to me. I, I think they're listening to me because now I got a text message. Your smart things hub at home is now inactive. <laughs> so they, see, my see, they're listening. Up, somehow disconnected. Well, I, I think my devil's advocate, Mike, Carlos, was that was actually me. I went into your account. And there you go. It. Yeah. <laughs> I, the the problem. Well, the problem with the the cloud and how it interacts with the web application, how it interacts with the app on your smartphone, is uh, a couple of things. One, protocol security, and two, web application security, which are more prominent now as factors of whether the devices or the system is secure. If we take those out of the equation, we just have to worry about the device and securing it with a password. But now that we've got all of these components that are talking to each other over the internet using the cloud, we've got protocol and we've got application issues that have to be fixed. And that was the focus of the Veracode report. Don't forget, Veracode does application security, so that was obviously the focus of their report and i don't think they were being you know biased in any uh, oh, no, kind no, of way I, like no that. i no please no, i i i guess my my point is broader right and and obviously you and i like to talk about leadership from time to time so i i almost see this as it's a leadership challenge because there are methods which we we can build on this smart i mean this isn't a new problem right mm -hmm. i mean for years i mean gosh 20 years ago you'd find a group that had developed a whole custom application and it was an uh, unpatched nt351 box oh well, that's going to go well for us, right? So, so these aren't new challenges. So when we say, hey, are there ways to do this? Are there ways to think about it? And so what it's telling me is there's nobody at a higher level saying, hey, let's go think about the consumer experience. Let's think about what happens if somebody breaches our systems. Let's think about some ways people might try to do it. And I get it. We don't want to get lost, uh, right? I mean, I talk about risk catnip all the time. We don't want to go chase after it and, and, and waste all our time. But at the same time, some of these things feel like they're not that complicated if they were thought of as requirements up front. Mm -hmm. So is that the problem? Are we missing these, these conversations and these requirements up level so that the leadership says, hey, guys, this is important. I get it. We don't want to derail the project. We got to speed to market. We got to get 100 million of these things shipped. Great. I, no, I don't think anybody's arguing that. But so then the question comes into, well, then where – I guess – and I don't have a, a finger on it. Somewhere these conversations are breaking down, and that's yeah. our opportunity. And it's a, a great segue, Mike, into a webcast series that myself, Mike, and John Strand are doing about security leadership and how it plays into uh, what we do as security professionals. And there's a couple of different aspects that we'll be exploring. Uh, one that Mike was touching on was, you know, maybe you're a developer, maybe you're an architect. And how do you interject security into the conversation? How do you make people understand the problems and affect change? And I know, Larry, you're listening nodding your head, right? Yep. That comes into play after you do a penetration test. Yep. You hand that report to someone. And then you go to the, do the penetration test next year, and not much has really changed. <laughs> Although there are, there are some of our clients that we're in there our third, fourth, fifth year going back in. And yep. Oh my God! This is hard. Say, yeah, and no, so no, this people, is hard. We, some <laughs> people get it, and I think yeah. the, some of the differences aren't necessarily related to technology. I think they're related to security leadership, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what Mike, yeah. John, and uh, myself are going to attempt to do in a webcast series is empower and enable people to understand how to be a better security leader to take those challenges to the organization and affect change is just just one of the things that we'll be talking about but Excellent. that's the premise of the uh, two or maybe three part webcast series that that we'll be releasing so nice Don't Mike did you have anything else to add to that 
No, I mean, Paul, I mean, that was, that was brilliant. I mean, here's what we're going to do. I, I've spent uh, over a decade looking at this and, and what I've shared with you, and, uh, and I'm happy to share with anybody who wants to see it. Um, I've been developing a framework. And, and so what we're talking about, what we're going to do when we kick it off is we're actually going to go explore it a little bit better, right? It's, it's the same thing we talk about all the time, right? What's the problem we're trying to solve? So instead of jumping right to a solution, we're going to, we're going to cycle back a bit. We're going to, we're going to set a foundation um, and we can entertain a lot of questions at that point and really get into the discussion. And then as the webcast series unfolds, we'll dig deeper into the specifics on how do you communicate? specifically. Uh, how do you influence change specifically? Actually, I, there's a segment I want to do just on change. It's, mm. Change is this fantastic thing, and we all say we want it unless it means we have to change, and then suddenly I, I don't like it as much. And so it's, um, no, it's, I'm, I'm excited about it, and, and I look forward to, you know, feedback, conversation about it. Yeah, so. so subscribe to our mailing list to get notified of those webcasts. Check our social media. You can go to securityweekly.com forward slash insider. Subscribe to our insider mailing list where we'll be announcing um, those webcasts as they're coming up. Uh, I think we're, we're tentatively scheduled to do one this month. Um, so that yep. registration will be posted very, very soon. Probably by the time you listen to this, I would imagine the registration will be posted. So make sure that you go do that. Um, and, and don't watch CSI Cyber too much. Or, or, no, or, or do, but strictly for the yeah, entertainment, entertainment value. value. Entertainment value as it kind of relates back to the subject we talked about, uh, about prying eyes. So I think we're going to end that segment talking about webcams and such. Move on to some of the stories for this week. So with that, we're going to take a short break, come back, and talk about the stories for this week. <laughs> 